Parker. Zoe, I'll have you know that I'm playing injured over here. My thumb is on the injury re list, uh, stung by a scorpion last night. So oh. I can't feel my wow. thumb, yet somehow I'm persevering over here and getting through this show and quarterbacking you guys to a victory. <laughs> Man. It's really impressive. It's just brutal right there. There's no swelling whatsoever. And Paul no. says, are you sure it was a scorpion, Paul? Are I mean, you sure? I mean, I'm not going to put my you performance today. by an ant. My quarterback performance isn't quite on the level of C.J. Stroud, but I, I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of a guy who's blown way past rookie of the year and is now, now has his goal set on MVP of the league. I mean, gentlemen, can I get an instant reaction to C.J. Stroud, who has the Texans at 5-4, and four, the seventh playoff seed right now in the AFC. They already have more wins right. than all of last year. I mean, I think it's it's, it's remarkable, and it it goes beyond C.J. Obviously, he's a significant part of that. I mean, I think D'Amico Ryans and, and the culture and, and what they're creating over there has helped as well. Uh, but none of this is done without the maturation process that has happened pretty quickly in C.J. Stroud, right? Because typically you know what your veterans are going to do and you don't know about all of these rookies and especially a rookie quarterback and the way he has played the game, you know, and I haven't had a ton, uh, opportunity to watch a ton of film on him, but I obviously know he's protecting the football. He only has two interceptions, which is going to save you a lot in a lot of games in a lot of situations. So he's taking care of the football. That's the most important thing on, on the field. But then going back and watching him versus the Cincinnati Bengals, he looks like Kyler Murray did in <laughs> last week. As far as him, his ability to sit back, uh, observe the field, spread He's the ball the around. Field. I mean, getting the ball out of his hands really quickly. Leading a game-winning drive, which he's done two weeks in a row. Yeah, he's he's calm, cool, and collective, and then he's moving around as he needs to, right? He's athletic, but to your point, Paul, he doesn't want to necessarily take off and run. I mean, he's just extending plays, and he's doing a really good job to play calling. They have a nice zone game, under center game that Wolf already, always talks about, and boot and play action off of it, waggles. It, it, I don't know. I don't know the offensive coordinator, but it wouldn't shock me if <laughs> it's if, Bobby Slowick they, who was oh, with was Bobby? Oh. Shanahan in oh, San okay. Francisco went from passing game coordinator to D'Amico so, Ryan's OC. So it makes a lot of sense, right? When it, when I'm looking at it and some of the similarities that you will see with a Niners um, offense, but it's it's just and again he builds a picture too for you, right? The same play now it's different. Same play we're gonna run the ball zone. Now it's boot and play action off of it. Uh, we're going to waggle our guy out because he's athletic. He's going to get him out. Now we're going to throw back across the field on you. Just like you saw, similar plays you saw last week yeah. with Kyler is what you're going to see this week. And he executes at a high level. There's probably been a couple of bad throws like all quarterbacks has that could go either way. And so if the Cardinals want to beat this team, they Marco Wilson has to pick the ball off, right? Whoever's out there has to take advantage. Of it. If he gives you an opportunity, you put your hands on the ball because he only has two. And I know he's probably thrown a lot more than that. People are just not catching him. You got to catch the football and take possessions away from him and make him have to maybe feel like he has to play outside of himself. I yeah. don't know if he's had to been forced to do that yet. Yeah, you know, for the first time, maybe question himself. Right, yeah. He's seeing the field, yeah. Because he is seeing the field so well. That's a great observation. It really is. And the proof is there when you look at some of the numbers here. There are three guys that have targets in the 50s, which tells me he's spreading the ball. Right. He's looking around. Three guys with targets in the 50s right now, and that leads the Houston Texans. You talk about Dalton Schultz, the tight end. Um, you talk about Nico Collins and Tank Dell. These guys, the, just listen to this for a minute. Dalton Schultz leads the team in receptions, the tight end. Tight end. Leads the team in receptions, okay? Nico Collins leads the team in receiving yards. Interesting. Tank Dell leads the team in targets and touchdowns. Mm. Think about that. It sounds I mean, really, these yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah, they're they multiple. It, it would be very interesting to see if Kyler has started this year off. Would that be, we talking about McBride, Hollywood Brown, Michael Wilson, yes, right, Rondell right. Moore, right? Maybe. Very, very similar, yeah. right, type of Spread skill set ball. and personnel, right, and what they're doing in the game and, and the way they're running their offense. Would, would, could that we easily see the Cardinals in this similar type of position right now if Kyler has started the year off especially playing the what, way he's playing right now. Hollywood Brown would have four more deep shot touchdowns right, <laughs> right now. Right, right. If he was with Kyla all year long, yeah. Hollywood would be going to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Here's Jonathan Gannon yesterday just talking about Stroud. Yes, he's a rookie. No, you can't treat him like one. 
No, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't look like a rookie out there. I know that. Uh, process is extremely fast, very accurate, quick release. Um, they're, I don't know, top one or two in explosive passes in the NFL right now. Um, and explosives come up on all downs, mixed downs, third known pass. He's doing a really good job. That's why they're, you know, the record, they're above 500 right in the playoff hunt, playing good football right now, really good football. Here's your, he jumped off the tape. Here's your holy cannoli stat, your mind blow, okay? You, you mentioned the two interceptions. He has 15 touchdown passes, two picks. He also leads the NFL in passing yards per game. The only quarterbacks to do that ever Google. first 10 weeks of the season. That's right. <laughs> Holy cannoli stat here. Here's the quarterbacks who have done that through the first 10 weeks of a season. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and C.J. Stroud. The last rookie quarterback to lead the NFL in passing yards per game Davey O'Brien, 1939. <laughs> they named an award after him. Okay? And and two weeks ago against Tampa, he had 470 yards passing, five touchdowns. Those are both rookie single-game records. I mean, maybe we just need to flower him and shower him with praise. You know, just build up his ego to the point where, okay, he's smelling himself on right. Sunday, and then, boom, you bring it to him. Yeah, I, and I don't know if he's cut like that. He almost feels more like a Jalen Hurts type of mindset. You know, the way he pr approaches the game, professional, locked in. Yep. You can give him all the praise he wants, but he's his biggest critic. Um, and so the defense is going to have to go out there and take it from him. You know, put some pressure on him, get some hits on him, make him throw some tips and overthrows. Got to get those, right? And 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 really steal some possessions for Kyler to be, allow them to score touchdowns this week. I think that's one area that we want to see more touchdowns finishing drives. And what's incredible about this, let me just say this, in, in regard to the Texans and their offense and the fact that they're number two in passing yards per game and number three in passing yards per play. It's really, really good what they're doing right now, but their offensive line has done a great job of protecting mm. C.J. Stroud as well. And you can see it once again with some of these guys. Dalton Schultz is his security blanket, so to speak, right now. But think about this, guys. Nico Collins and Tank Dell, these guys are third-round picks from two different drafts, but they're third-round. It's not like he's got this bag of unbelievable talent that he's throwing to. Hey, That's we, the incredible thing about it. You know that better than anybody, though, Wolf. If you execute and do your job, it don't matter what round you get drafted no, no, in, right? I, I, I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, to your point, these guys are executing man, at a very high here, level. So look. to kind of break that mindset of you got to have all these first rounders to do X, Y, Z. No, you don't. Do your job. Execute it, right? Block, catch. Throw the ball. It's very simple. We always overcomplicate it and try to make it all about talent. But if you execute, you can win a lot of football games. And who does that reflect on? D'Amico Ryan. Yeah. A lot. Because I'm going to simplify it. If you get the head coach and the quarterback right, anything's possible with the rest of the roster. Right. So if D'Amico Ryan's is bidding to be NFL Coach of the Year, if C.J. Stroud is legitimately in the NFL MVP conversation, which he is – Guess what? That's where everything else falls into place. You're five and four. You just went to Cincinnati. You just yeah. beat Joe Burrow in their place. And, uh, you know, you got all this praise coming in. In fact, here's D'Amico Ryans. And he, he's a little wary because all this recent success can't let it go to your head. The conversation that comes about success and how you handle it is don't get the big head. We stay humble and we stay hungry. That's what it's all about. You stay humble and that's – that's the only way I know how to approach it, right? Just as much as people talk great about you, if something goes wrong, they'll be talking bad about you the next day. So you can't ride that wave. And I teach our team, we don't ride the ups and downs of the season. We prepare the same way each and every week. And we go out and play our best football on Sunday. That's all that matters. We can't get caught up in the headlines because headlines don't win you games. You got to go execute. You got to go play good football to win games. And that's the only thing that matters to us. My young crunk brothers, you need to go ahead and file that away. We need to put that in the audio file for the young crunks. Do you know who D'Amico Ryan's defensive coordinator is? Matt Burke. Yes. Cardinals longtime yep. D-line coach who knows Kyla Murray really well. Big yep. deal? Not a big deal. Uh, I mean, he probably has some tendencies, but I, again, this is a new offense. It, and Kyler has matured. So you can't attack, you know, the old, the the new Kyler with the old in mind. 
you have to look at him a little bit differently, the way he's spreading the ball around, at least in this first game, how comfortable he looked working through his progressions. Because you're not going to have necessarily the same amount of time to maybe rush him or to drop coverage and think he's just going to run around and throw it. So I wouldn't necessarily, maybe not even a spy for him. You may need to have more guys in coverage because he's operating at a high level based on the one game throwing the ball down the field. So he's going to have to figure something out based on that one game sample size. But, Paulie, to your point, it is going to be really cool to see what Mac Burke does because everything he does, every defense he calls, it's a little piece of what he thinks about Kyler Murray, right? And yeah, what they're right. Do. Of course, he has tendencies, but I mean, just the, everything about this offense, the way it hooked, I mean, the, the 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 play calling, the structure of it, how they're attacking you, right? You, it's not like it's just, hey, hey, guys, he's going, they're going to line up in three by one. Hop is going to be on the backside. We take that away, we're going to confuse them, right? It's it's, yep. it's not that simple, right? It's not that simple anymore, hey. Man, now they like to run the ball. Now they'll have some boots. Now they'll have some waggles. He's booting out. But, hey, backside, you can't be too aggressive because he will throw this ball back to the other side, just like we've seen C.J. do oh, yeah. in our game. So is this – And here it, comes James Conner. Cram that yeah, vertical. Just so you know, much. so much. And these teams are very mirrored. I mean, because I even we didn't talk about Devin Singletary for the Houston Texans, but he was a throwaway in Buffalo, and he's out there running the ball really well. Is a big reason why the boot and the play-action game has been working for C.J. So it – you, all those things matter. And you think about James Conner and what he's been able to do. Um, it's just a different just a different team, the attention to detail, the attention to wanting to run the ball, the commitment to it, and then having all these plays off of it. Burke is going to have his, his hands full more so than what the old Kyle in, in the old office would have been.